welcome back for another episode in our AI series in Unreal Engine 4. Last episode we set up the melee attack animations for our NPC and the player character and we're now going to go into the behaviour tree of our AI to make them see when they're close enough to the player to attack them. So in my behaviour tree for the NPC we currently have got him in two branches essentially we've got the um, patrolling okay and searching AI over here and then over here we've got the chasing sequence okay so we're going to be expanding this chasing sequence to include the attack animations and attack code so the first thing we need to decide to do is determine whether or not we are in range of the player so what I'm going to do is going to create a new service um, to, to calculate that for us remember a service is just something that you want to happen when it reaches these nodes okay it's not a check it's not doing anything like that it's just doing a service okay it's doing something so in my um before we do that though we need to go into our blackboard and set a new key for us to use so I go new key and i'm going to go boolean and i'm going to say player is in melee range okay and that should be pretty obvious what that's going to be doing it's a boolean which is going to store true or false whether or not the player is actually in range to be attacked so the service we're going to go up to the top right uh, top bar up here and go new service and you want to choose a bt service blueprint base and like we've done for all the other ones we're going to name it and we're going to name this one um is a player in range okay and in here we're going to add the event activation so every time this is activated it's going to check whether or not the player's in range and the way we do that is with a node called get distance oh. uh, da -da -da. maybe tick off context sensitive da -da -da. where is it Oh, get distance two. There you go. Get distance two. So get distance two needs uh, two tar uh, a target actor and the other actor. So the other actor will obviously be the player character. Because that's what we want to check how far away they are. And the target self needs to be a target is actor. So this needs to be an actor. Now this is an actor object reference. So this should be fine to go straight into here. I think <laughs> we'll see. Um, this may return the AI controller. We'll get to that if it is needs to be changed to that. So this will get distance to between these two, and I'm just going to check whether or not it's in a certain range. So I'm going to go is less than or equal to another float, and the float that I want to check against is going to be a value I'm going to set as a variable. So when the variable's here, I'm going to click on the plus variable, and I'm going to type in melee range and that's going to be a float and i'm going to set a default value for that to be 500 compile and drag that onto the other pin so now it's going to check against this melee range value and if i make it editable that means i can access it and edit it per behavior tree as i like so with that compiled we now got the branch uh, the condition to use for our branch so if i click on a branch here and use that as a condition if it's true that means we are in range so i need to set a blackboard key to change so on the variables here and we're going to do is in range and that's going to be a variable type of blackboard key selector make it editable click compile and we're going to drag that into the blueprint and then from there we're going to set value as ball on the here set blackboard value as ball onto true well in fact we don't actually need a branch we can get rid of that branch actually and just plug the value straight into our media range that works a bit more efficient okay click compile and that will do there so on our behavior tree where we put this we're going to put it right at the start on this first selector here 
So I'm going to right click, add service, and I'm going to choose the um, is player in range service that we just made. So now every t uh, t time we go through this behavior tree, it's going to check whether or not we are in range. If we are in range, that's when we handle stuff to happen. So we are chasing the player. Okay. So what we need to do is add a task to this to call uh, NPCs event melee attack. So let's create a new task. Again, go into my content explorer and changing the name of it immediately. Um, melee attack. And open melee attack up. So on here we're going to go um, exec execute, receive execute AI. So this will trigger at the start when it's hit on the behavior tree. Um, and what I want to do is on the controlled pawn, I want to work out whether or not um, our melee, uh, our NPC, first of all, inherits this interface. So controlled pawn does inherit, uh, does in implement interface, sorry. Choose this and then choose your combat interface from the drop down. And that will return true or false based on whether or not we have that interface assigned to the enemy AI. That will go into a branch. Like so. And because it's true, the controlled pawn means we can call the melee attack message. So without casting, which is quite expensive to do for the computer, um, we are now calling this melee attack. After we call that melee attack, what I want it to do is then give it a chance to actually play the full attack animation before finishing this task. So the easiest way of doing that is just put a simple delay in. And I'm putting it 1.2 seconds. And when it's completed that delay, it's going to finish the execute. If we didn't have that delay in, it would finish the execute too quickly and these, this attack won't ever play, it'll just hang because it constantly wants to restart it. So click compile and go back to our behavior tree. And we now need to find a place for this to go on our behavior tree. Now the best way of doing this is with using a parallel because we want it to run towards the player and when it gets near the player we want it to attack straight away and may be running at the same time as it is um, attacking so when it's chasing the player we actually want to do a parallel so a simple parallel allows you to basically do two tasks at almost at the same time so the purple here is your main task the main task for this is going to be chasing the player so hook that up to chasing the player the simple parallels second task the secondary one this task will run whilst this one is running so i want to uh, attack melee attack the player so there's our melee attack um, but i only want this melee attack to trigger if we are in range which we have on our blackboard so for this we can do a blackboard decorator so go to add decorator blackboard and this blackboard base condition, you go over to the right hand side, and you can choose blackboard key, player is in melee range, and you will choose is, make sure is set is true. Click save, and we're almost done here. So this simple parallel will chase a player, and then at the same time attack the player if they are, if it is appropriate. What I want it to do though, the way a parallel works, is it has different types and different modes. By default, it's immediate, meaning that as soon as this is finished, it will uh, quit out of the whole entire thing, and this won't even run. So chasing player won't work because that is constantly finishing all the time. So if this is finished, then this will never run. So we need to use the second mode for parallel, and that is delayed. So if you go over to the right hand side in the details panel for your simple parallel, you'll see finish mode immediate. And you can then see it delayed. And when you hover over it, it tells you. So this is when the main task finishes. It waits for the background tree to finish as well. So essentially, when this is finished chasing the player, this thing will also, uh, it will, this won't continue on to the next one until this is finished as well.
Okay, click save, and let's see how this works. So you'll see me and not work. So what have we missed? Let's have a look. Okay, so I found the issue. The issue was a silly mistake. Um, on our is player in the range service, I forgot to change my blackboard key to be the correct blackboard key. So instead of target location, it needs to be player is in melee range. That's the first issue. The second issue is actually inside of it. And as I thought, this is going to return the AI controller, not the actual pawn itself. So I need to get the pawn of our um, actor here. So rather than using this event, we want to use the other one, which is receive activation AI, um, which has the controlled pawn, and that goes to get distance two. Now we turn an actual distance to the player. And then finally, we want the is player in range. We're going to drag that rather than on this selector onto this chase player sequence. We don't really need to check it at the start. We want to check it on the when we enter this chase player sequence. Click save, push play, and we can now test it out. And you can see here, attacks go to attack me when I'm in range. The range is a bit too far, so we need to tweak that number down, which is fortunately quite easy to do. In our behavior tree, we just click on the is player in range, and we can choose the melee range up here to whatever value we like. So let's say 250 instead. Push play. So when I'm in range now, it goes to whack me. Okay, and that'll do. In the next episode, we're going to go a bit further and add the damage dealing to the player. Um, so when we detecting hits from this melee attack by the enemy AI. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to see more and the next episode in specifically uh, now, you can head over to patreon.com forward slash Ryan Lady. Support me for just at least one dollar. and You can watch all our videos there uh, right now. And you also get access to our Discord server. So big thank you to everyone that supported me uh, thus far. If you have any comments, queries or requests, please leave them in the comment below. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel and I look forward to seeing you all next time. Bye bye.